Hi you guys, I'm Dr. Christy Wise and today I want to talk to you about foreplay. So you can Google foreplay and find pages and pages and pages of endless, you know, suggestions and tips and, you know, magazine articles and what she said and what he said. The tips I'm going to give you are the top 14 that I think over the last three decades of working with people are probably the most impactful. Um, and if you try just a few of them, you will probably notice a massive difference in the sexual experience that you have, but you have to try them and you have to, you know, go all in when you're trying them. So you pick a few, if you want to do more than a few, I would love that. Um, but just try a few and you let me know what you think about it. I have um, on my website more information. And again, thank you for the questions and the ideas and the feedback that you guys are giving me is incredible. So that's at lifesauce.com, life-sauce.com. So let's talk about the 14, you know, top sexy foreplay tips that I have seen in uh, three decades of working with people that are um, pretty impactful. So the first one is to take time to feel sexy. Look, let's face it. If you don't feel sexy, you are not going to want to participate in any way, shape or form. And so, and if you do, it's going to be mediocre. So um, I'm not going to tell you what I think is sexy. Everybody finds different types of sexy in themselves. You know, for some, it's when they're sweaty after a workout. For others, it's when they're you know, doused in perfume or jewelry or high heels or, you know, cologne or whatever it is that you feel sexy in. But what I am going to tell you is that the way you feel matters. So put yourself in the right frame of mind and you figure out what makes you feel sexy. If you don't know what makes you feel sexy, even better time to explore, right? So start with the basics, shaving your legs, putting on pretty lotion, all of those things. Um, and for guys, you know, even if it means doing push-ups and that makes you feel, you know, sexy or strong, whatever it is, you, you try it on and then decide. Um, but sexy matters. Uh, the second one is embrace your own self-pleasure. Now, there's a thousand reasons why masturbation, I know a lot of you are uncomfortable with the M word, but I'm going to say masturbation is so fantastic. Besides the fact that you get to know your body and, and what feels right and what feels good, and it increases all of those neurotransmitters that make you feel good, but it also increases blood flow to your vagina and to your penis and to the, all of the organs that where all of your erogenous zones live. So masturbating before, you know, maybe in the morning or the afternoon um, is a fantastic idea. Um, and you'll notice uh, that it will um, have an impact, um, you know, if you're going to have sex later. So go for it. You know, you'll burn some calories. You'll increase some of those neurotransmitters and it's wonderful and it'll feel great. So, um, and put you in the mood. So yes, masturbate. Uh, number three is uh, <laughs> give into oral. Um, that's both the giving and the receiving. The playtime is important, and besides the fact that oral feels wonderful, and especially if you know what you're doing, um, it's super sexy. And most people find themselves becoming very aroused when they're both giving and receiving oral. So I say um, go for it and enjoy it. Uh, number four is your natural smell. Now, there's a lot of debate about smell. You know, some of us are very testy about smell, but what you don't want to do is um, have all of your parts smell like a flower that vomited, right? You, you want some of that natural, um, you know, scent. Um, some people love all natural scent. Some people love some, but covering it up completely rips you off and rips them off and for both of you. So the natural smell and taste um, and scent and all of that is important. So, um, you know, just kind of go a bit organic on that. Bathe, <laughs> but um, don't try to cover up what's already naturally sexy. Uh, number five is get kinky. Don't be afraid to assert yourself a little bit. Um, if you're not one to, you know, 
Maybe you're on the kinkier side. I say try it just a bit. Push yourself just a little bit um, or push your partner just a little bit um, because you'll find that to be oh, more enticing than you probably realize. So not just sticking with the same old, same old, but push the boundary just a little bit. Um, let's see. Learn to receive pleasure. I talked about um, oral a minute ago, but um, learning to receive pleasure is, and I talk about surrendering in a minute, but um, is important because again, it's a turn on for both of you to both give and receive, but to receive it means that you can finally kind of let yourself um, enjoy, you know, and be cared for, which is super sexy. So that's it. You know, like let it happen. Stop fighting it so much. Uh, number seven, talk dirty. This one I want you to be cautious of only because what you think is talking dirty might not be a turn on to them. So you want to know who your partner is and what turns them on. You're trying to turn yourself on, but you also want to not turn them off. So talk dirty, yes, but um, it has to be kind of authentic to who you guys are, not some random, you know, you know, something that you saw online. So um, you're not in a porn movie. You don't have to do that whole thing. But for you, you know, um, whatever feels dirty to you guys. So um, number eight is get assertive. Stop waiting for him or her to um, start this ball rolling and you get assertive and jump right in. I don't care where you are. It does not have to be in the bedroom, right? Foreplay happens way before you get to the bedroom. So it could happen the minute, from the minute you wake up and get each other coffee to the entire day to how you cook dinner together. So, um, you know, that's, that's an important one. Uh, number nine is uh, your brain. That's our largest sex organ. If your head isn't into it, uh, the rest of you won't be either. So remember that your state of mind is so important. Um, number 10 is stop taking jabs at each other. Stop it. Stop it. It's not the time. If you guys want to deal with it, you, know, you have my contact information. Um, you know, right before sex or when you're wanting to get intimate is not the time to start taking little digs at each other. And if you're one that says stupid shit all the time and you know who you are, then pay attention to it because you're kind of fucking yourself over by doing that. So there's a time and a place, although jabs aren't the best, but um, especially when you say, I'm just joking, like that's nobody thinks it's funny and it's definitely not sexy. So stop that. Um, communicate your needs. Now, communication is important, but the way you communicate it is really important. I talk all the time about the way in which you communicate, right? There's a big difference in communicating from a place of love and passion and worship than, you know, from annoyance and contempt and aggravation. So pay attention to the way you communicate. And remember, communication is both uh, the communicators and the listeners job. It's not just one or the other. It's both of you. Um, so communicate and, um, you know, in a way that you feel um, really resonates with you. Um, Twelve is remember making out. Kissing is important. Holding hands, touching each other's skin. I love the idea of skin time um, without any other reason other than laying naked and touching each other, but kissing and touching is a huge part. Um, you do not just dive right in, you know, put your hand down her pants or start playing with a nipple. It's annoying. It's not sexy. So ease in. Um, I have something called alter ego. This is number 13. I love this. If you don't already have an alter ego, I call it, you know, like your stripper name. Um, lots of women have conversations about their stripper name, but your alter ego is the other part of you that gets to be a bit wild. You know, it's, it's the part of you that if you've had too many uh, shots of tequila that often comes out, but you know, who is your alter, alter ego and bring that person to the party and let them participate if you don't have the courage to do so. And then 14 is last one is surrender. Stop 
holding back already. Like, you know, there are times to keep it together and maintain control and be in charge. And, and then there are other times to just let your hair down and just surrender to how amazing that process is and how great it feels to be that close with somebody that you are that turned on by. So um, I say all in, right? So those are 14 really fun, um, very impactful uh, ways to enjoy foreplay. And remember, foreplay is something that happens all the time. It's not just right before sex. So think it through, right? Use your brain and use your body and enjoy each other. What else do we have to do? I can't think of anything else. So <laughs> have fun. Bye, you guys.